So guys, hi, this is Rohit and today we are going to talk about linear regression. The first, first, first ever machine learning algorithm that we're going to ever talk about, right? And first, the most basic and probably the most popular one that you will ever have or you'll probably ever learn about, right? So linear regression is the most basic thing. Uh, definitely goes without saying that uh, this is the most delicate step of your entire learning process. So. Uh, if you kind of get everything that is there in this lecture and probably a couple of lectures after this very clearly very uh, very I would say you yeah, pay attention and like very close attention to what we are talking about here and understand every detail of it the concept is crystal clear then I can assure you the rest of the machine learning is just gonna be cake work right so just just very pay very close attention to these lectures because these are kind of just the basics of your machine learning foundation right so the foundation is gonna be based built based on what you have learned as of uh, what you will be see the machine learning algorithm foundation is based built based on what we're gonna talk about here as of today uh, before this obviously what we have talked about all of this around statistical inference and uh, Python pandas all of those are gonna come handy today. So Let's uh, Make sure that we kind of understand all of those very 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 well right now So introduction to Python you are now a budding Pythonista I am sure you I hope you are because if you are not uh, let me kind of give you a small disclaimer uh, This is gonna be extremely tough then for you to kind of go and proceed from here on don't take that risk I would suggest I would suggest stop the video right up where you are go back be very 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 hands-on with python come back after a week or something but make sure you understand basics of python very well before you kind of progress here because that's gonna hamper your understanding of uh, linear regression quite a bit so uh, just just make sure that you understand everything thoroughly with python basics right because if you don't understand the program structure of things even if you get the mathematical details of what we're gonna talk about uh, it's gonna be hard for you to kind of keep everything retain everything and do practices at your end right so introduction to machine learning this I'm sure you have kind of gone through the close that's perfectly fine uh, if you don't get every small you don't remember every small detail of this particular lecture uh, basic probability and descriptive stats uh, again something I'm sure you have kind of gone through that uh, it's it's helpful if you kind of remember at least the descriptive stats part of it the inferential stats the hypothesis testing part of things it's fine if you kind of don't remember absolutely clearly but the descriptive part of things right where we talked about mean median mode all of those kind of things if it's it's helpful if you kind of remember that pretty clearly uh, now is it for the day we are going to understand the intuition behind linear regression then understand linear regression cost function uh, which are basically uh, one again something that is fairly common not across only linear regression something that is common across entire machine learning domain then we are going to talk about gradient descent again that's something that is just not specific to linear regression but specific to overall machine learning as such uh, introduction to linear regression in sklearn and then uh, learn about the different assumptions and how do we measure our performance using different other metrics right so we are going to do a comprehensive study start from why doing linear regression and how we can kind of get overall idea of doing that uh, you know just just using our basic knowledge so using intuition how we can figure out what we are trying to do and then understanding the maths behind all of that then trying to see how that you can code that up the same thing in python using sklearn which is probably something you're already familiar with sklearn is the most uh, most popular library in machine learning and then finally how do we measure what we have built how do we measure if our, what we have built is good enough or not so that's the agenda for the day let's get started the story so far is we have talked about this housing data set that John has been looking at uh, and he's basically housing house prices of New York and he's, his goal is to kind of get to a decent enough place for himself right he has been doing all sorts of crazy things as of this day right he did all of those mean median mode calculation using the house prices then he tried doing those inferential statistic observations whether his price is different from the rest of the states rest of the places in new york he did all sorts of those things so today is the day when he is finally down to the bit of calculating the price right so as of now he was basically concerned about kind of you know doing all of this overall calculations about places and all of that so today is the day when he first takes us takes the first step towards basically seeing 
if we can predict prices of houses given the features of houses and all of those so uh let's take that first prediction so first before we understand what is this whole prediction bit that john is getting into let's understand what is a product product predictor right so what is a predictor predictor is how could you say if a person went to a tier one tier two or tier three college in america uh simple if someone is determined to pursue a bachelor's degree higher sat scores or gpa uh that probably leads to better admissions right so that's something that we are familiar also in the indian aspect it's not true only for us colleges if you're trying to give your engineering and trans exam based on how well you perform kind of says that what is what is the kind of college that you would get into right so if you look at this particular distribution this distribution is basically the distribution of acceptance rates of people by sat scores uh and the, the basically the scores that people scored and the kind of acceptance they got right so obviously you can see uh if you scored a very high marks in your sat scores you tend to get a uh, higher acceptance in that range right so if you score high there's a high percentage a high chance that you will actually get through cornell uh so that's something that we already fairly intuitive know about right so we know that this concept of that there's this particular variable that we think is uh you know it is highly correlated with this other variable and it's not only correlated but is actually the causation right we talked about this earlier also correlation versus causation so you understand this part very well right so basically that uh this there are two variables out here so one is your chance of getting acceptance at cornell and then you score marks you score so out of this two there's a casual relationship between these two variables you marks the number of amount of marks you score in sat kind of determines uh, where you would get your your chances of course your chances of getting accepted right uh, as compared to the it's it's not the other way around right where your chance of acceptance if you, someone comes up says that hey i think you have high chance of acceptance at scat and then you kind of say that yeah your chance of acceptance is 50% and then you go and write the exam and you end up with uh 750 marks right that's not how it works you first give the exam get a marks and that marks kind of determines your acceptance it's not the other way around you you're given acceptance and that determines the marks you are kind of gonna come with that sat so the same thing uh, now if you know about this particular thing called drinking uh, this is something which is uh, probably people who have been uh, caught drunk driving probably would know that uh, or might not know that even because they were too drunk uh, so what you have what happens when you try and uh, have a lot of alcohol is basically that uh, there's something called blood alcohol content right so it's called bac and that's something that is basically a measure of how drunk you are and uh, if you have a lot of beers for example you will tend to have a high blood alcohol content obviously it varies from people to people and all of those things kind of happen but obviously the general idea is that more number of alcohol bags that you probably consume a higher number or higher is your chance of kind of having a very high blood alcohol content right so more number of beers probably more bac lower number of beers lower bac that's something that you would probably know of right and that's something again you can see from this diagram right so this on the axis on the x axis you have number of beers that you have consumed and on the y axis you have the blood alcohol content and you can see obviously as your number of beers increase obviously there's a blood alcohol content which is extremely high which is kind of getting higher and higher right as a blood so there's there's something that you can see is a is a linear relationship between blood alcohol content and number of beers right so as your beers increases so does your blood alcohol content and probably this person at the end is probably got a just bleed alcohol so that's the understanding uh of again you understand the casual relationship in this case right so it's not like you someone suddenly kind of your blood alcohol content starts rising abruptly in the middle of the night and then you start drinking beer because of that right it's it's not it's not really like that it's like you have beers and then your blood alcohol content rises right it's not like some hormonal changes start happening in your body your blood alcohol content starts rising and because of that you start consuming beer right so it's this seems these are very easy cases to understand uh, the casual relationship nature that kind of exists between these two variables so now think of a circumference and circle and its diameter so again the same concept right so this is a higher uh the higher the radius higher the diameter higher the circumference right and 
diameter kind of determines what is the circumference as compared to the other way around so right so that's that's the nature of relationships that we are going to try and explore in this particular course right now in this particular session today uh where there's a this is the seemingly linear casual relationship between two variables and our goal is to basically try and predict this casual relationship right try and predict what the value of this seemingly dependent variable would be when my independent variable basically assumes a particular value right so again so we have talked about all of this so now the concept of dependent and independent variable kind of becomes clear right so there's this particular variable which is independent right so blood alcohol uh, number of beers that you have that is independent you are absolutely free to choose number of beers that you have but your blood alcohol content not completely dependent on you cannot clearly say that hey i want my blood alcohol content to be 0.15 to for you to be kind of limiting it in within certain ranges you have to consume less beer right so that's the thing so number of beers is in your hand but what happens to your blood alcohol content is not actually dependent on you it's basically dependent on the number of beers that you have right similarly uh, can you can you control your coronal acceptance rate not really what you can control is the score in that exam right you can score higher if you want but that's about it right you cannot that would determine whether you can uh, con whether you kind of get accepted in cornell or not right so this is a relationship though. so this is what particular variable that is independent right it's something that can take up any value that's perfectly fine uh, and there is this dependent value which is basically dependent on the independent value right so this independent value is basically called the predictor and the dependent value is normally called the target variable right so now let's come back to john's problem right we have talked enough about beers and all that what not right so now let's come back to john's problem so john wants to uh kind of figure out what prices of houses would be right so house prices are dependent on a lot of other things right garage area living room area and so on and so forth right so probably five ten different features now so those are the variables that are independent right so the house could have any living area it may want to as long obviously there are some constraints but it can basically you can design it to have as much living area you can design it to have garage or not now once you design that you kind of the house price is dependent on those right uh it's not like you can kind of say that this is the house price i want to right whatever i build doesn't matter this is the house price i can keep it at no not that really doesn't work that way you have to first get your build your house with design your house whatever way you want to you can have as much living area you can have as much garage area you can have uh anything terra terrace or not balcony or not but once you have all of that that would all of those features along with the location neighborhood would kind of tell you what is the price of your house right so our target variable would be the sales price because that's something that is dependent on other features and our our uh, it target our independent features could be for example in this case let's roll with the area of the house right so we want to see if the price of a house is really affected by area of a house or not uh, so understanding is that so there's a hypothesis that what we want we have this hypothesis in mind is that area of a house should be something that should determine the price of a house at least to some extent right so we want to kind of capture what is the extent to which it is kind of capable of predicting house prices and the second thing that we want to kind of understand is 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 there even if if it's even at all capable or not right so if it's capable if yes then to what extent so that's the understanding so you want to see if area and house sales prices are related to each other or not so now let's look at the data right and this is how the data looks like so we do so we see a lot area and the corresponding sales price with it right so as of now till till like the lecture before this we have all been concerned with the sales price itself right and with the sales price how it is varying what is the mean what is the median what is the mode you know and how it's kind of varying across in different localities and all of that that's perfectly fine today is the first step of our prediction day and we are here so this is what your prediction typically would always look like so you would have this particular thing that is a target variable which is sales price and normally referred to as y and then you have got your x which is your lot area right so that is your independent variable you could have multiple independent variable you could have single independent variable uh but that's about it right so this is this is how your data always looks like so you have this corresponding thing that you want to predict and there are corresponding other things that are features or predictors or independent variable they're all the same same terms right features independent variables uh predictors whatever you call them 
so now let's plot our data and see how it looks like so uh, general general rule of thumb and uh, not rule of thumb also for sake of convenience and standardization everywhere we use always the independent variable on your x axis and the dependent variable is on your y axis so your dependent variable is price that's on the y axis and your x axis and this looks uh, sort of sort of messy uh, well there, there seems like there's a clear trend out here which is that your prices uh, obviously are increasing right so your prices uh, tend to increase as your area kind of increases but there's not a strong relationship right so basically your data looks like something like this right So basically what we are able to see here is that there's a, there's a range in which your prices are fluctuating. Obviously that range is a lot but what you can see is that the range is kind of moving up and up as your prices area increases right. So this is the area and this is the prices. So price and area you can see that there's a obviously you can clearly see that there's a there's a lot of bubbles around here so that means that it's it's not an absolute straight line that they're lying on uh, but you can clearly see that there's a range that which in the in which the price is kind of fluctuating right when the area is low you can see that range here right so this range is not extremely high and that range is uh, higher at this end right when the area of the house is high so that's something that you can sort of infer from this data by looking at this right so obviously that's this is not a very strong relationship but there's definitely some kind of a relationship right so now let's say we want to predict the price of a house whose area is 40,000 square feet how should we go about it so this is the first problem john kind of faces which is that if i have to now predict the price of a house how do we do that so now there are two specific options that is currently available for john right so before we kind of look at what we can do here one easy way is because we look at this particular price right so this is 14,000 and at 14,000 we basically see what is the range in which the price is basically fluctuated right so let's say this and this so this is the range in which the prices fluctuate in 14,000 now what you can do is basically you can take this and you can say take a mean of this or median or whatever right and that would basically say that at 14,000 price, this are the, they are, they are probably in 40,000, you would basically have five houses, right? So, you would probably have five houses, right? So, this is a, there could be five houses or there could be probably three houses, whatever. At 14,000, there were five houses around this 14,000 area square feet, right? So now you can do is you can take five of these houses and take a mean of them or you can take a median of those sorts and basically from that you can basically predict what would be the price of a house area with, with area 14,000 square feet right and that is something what normally statistics would have told us about how to do right descriptive statistics from basic descriptive statistics knowledge this is something that you're already familiar with right now what is the problem with this kind of an analysis is this two things right one is this doesn't kind of take at all into the cognizance that what is how the data of the rest of the houses look like right so this 14,000 points could very well be outlier points right so at 14,000 square feet probably you are just looking at a very posh locality right in which you have just got these houses with 14,000 square feet probably at 14,010 square feet which is slightly a higher area you would probably have houses from a very uh, poor neighborhood right so based on just the houses with 14,000 square feet if you try and do this kind of a calculation you are kind of completely ignoring the overall trend of so probably the trend is something like this right so this is how the house prices normally vary and what you have is this prices are probably overlier outlier points right so if you just try and conclude based on this five houses then you're kind of trying and you're probably making some, some probably a very big error right because this five houses at 14,000 square feet are completely out there so that's a problem with just doing this kind of a statistical analysis if you're just trying to take area just at 40,000 square feet or somewhere around this area right 
because that doesn't tell you the entire picture of how city as in in new york in any other locality if you go and take a 40000 square feet what is the kind of prices that you might expect that you cannot try and guess just from looking at this data right because this data could be could possibly be biased obviously there's a chance that it would not be biased also but there's a very high possibility because you're just looking at five data points right after 50000 data points and those five data points could be absolutely biased so that's the idea that's why you don't want to kind of go ahead and look at do those kind of things so what you want to do is you want to kind of take into cognizance the entire data and you want to try and see the pattern from the entire data just rather than just from five data points because the entire data would give you a much more robust and much more stronger way to kind of infer what is going to happen right so what you do is to do that you try and take the entire data and based on the entire data you fit a straight line right because you know that there's a linear relationship you know that as price increases area as sorry as area increases price increases right so you know that there's a sort of linear relationship between them so to capture that what you do is you try and compute try and draw a straight line right and then what you will do is basically you see what is the price as per the straight line right the straight line basically gives you an overall uh trend from the entire data and based on that you can compute that at 14000 price at 14000 area what is the price that is uh, to be expected based on the entire data, right? Not just the five data points which are there at 14,000 uh, square feet, but based on the entire data, what is the price that you can expect, right? So to do that, you basically have to take the entire data and draw a straight line, right? So now, to draw a straight line, now let's come to the bit about drawing a straight line. So drawing a straight line was all awesome. So now, drawing a straight line right so now drawing a straight line is basically so this is a y axis and this is a x axis right so what does drawing a straight line kind of mean so drawing a straight line basically means doing this thing so a straight line is basically can be represented in this equation right so y equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x so x is an independent variable, y is a dependent variable and by saying as there's a linear relationship between y and x, all you are doing is basically saying that y equals to beta naught plus beta 1 x, right? So what is beta naught? Beta naught is basically the value of y when x equals to 0, right? So what happens then is basically you can say that this is this particular in value right when x equals to 0 is basically the value of beta naught so beta naught is basically the length of in this particular example the price of houses even when there is no area right so even if it's a zero area house what is the price of that particular house obviously that physically doesn't make as much sense uh, but then the under, uh, you can kind of intuitively understand this as what is the basic cost of a house irrespective like what is uh, you know if, if, they, if you have got a house in there like uh, if you have got even a land in there what is the basic price of that land plot right of sorts so that is basically something that would basically imply what is beta naught right so beta naught is basically minimum amount that even if like even if there's no if there's no house actually there's just is probably a land plot of sorts or is the price of that particular land plot right and beta 1 basically is this beta 1 is basically the change in y so change in y in this case price for one unit change in area in x right so if area changes by one square feet what is the corresponding change in price right so obviously you you know that your area changes with price and that's something that we that's the whole understanding of why we are drawing a straight line right now how how quickly does that change just like if your area changes by a one unit one square foot does your price change drastically that would probably mean the beta one value is high right and that would basically mean that your curve is sloped like this right so in this case you can see if a small change of area the price changes drastically as compared to say something like this and in this case it's almost so even if there's a small change in x the y prices doesn't change a lot right so this is basically high 
beta 1 this is low beta 1 right so beta 1 is basically called the slope of a line and beta naught is called the intercept right so to draw a straight line we basically need to find out these two parameters right beta naught and beta 1 and beta naught and beta 1 as you can clearly see in this case beta naught is basically the intercept and beta 1 is basically the change in y for one unit change in x right so if there's a high beta 1 which basically means that for even a slight change in x y changes drastically in this case beta 1 is low which basically means that even if x changes a lot y also doesn't change actually a lot right so if x probably kind of keep on increasing but y doesn't increase so that's the understanding so if you have to kind of draw a straight line this is what john needs to do right so john was this guy uh, if you remember again the problem was 14,000 square feet what is the price of a house at 14,000 square feet right and uh, there were two options if you remember we had talked about now the second option was basically drawing the straight line and drawing the straight line meant that there were two things that he needed to figure out right so now that we understand so now which is a line to choose now obviously what John can do is he can without doing all of this machine learning models what he can do is he can really go to a very experienced broker per se and go and ask him sir can you please tell me what are the estimates of beta naught and beta 1 that you would have at your end right so that's that's the other way of doing dealing with things right always you don't need to do machine learning to kind of get to the answer you can be very smart you can just go out to your broker and say that uh you know just tell me what are your estimates of beta naught and beta 1 so that i can estimate what is the price of a 14,000 square feet but the problem is he went to three brokers now three brokers basically gave him this three plots right so now that's a problem right suddenly uh, if he had gone to one broker he would have been happy but now he went to three brokers and three of the brokers basically gave him different estimates of his beta naught and beta 1 so now let's plot the three of them and see how they look like so now if you look back at this diagram you can clearly see that uh, yes so there are three different house prices that he has got from three brokers and they all three seem to be actually reasonable right if you plot them so now john is faced with a real problem right so he is now considering how do i can evaluate which of these lines is the best fitting line right so it seems like all of them are pretty good but then he has to kind of so these are the three lines that uh, john has got from all his three brokers so now the understanding is how how can he evaluate which of these three lines are actually better right they all seemingly look like perfect right they, they, they seem like really good right how can he kind of evaluate which of these three is actually worth it right and which other brokers is actually correct so that's the that's a problem that uh, john is currently stuck in right so as you can all see that all the three of them seem like quite a good fit they are quite different from each other in result they will result in three different predictions right for example for house equals house equals to 9600 the prediction for yellow black and so you can basically get the predictions for the house price 9600 what are the different prices right so the understanding is that this three though they look similar for a price of 14,000 probably for an area of uh, 14,000 they would give absolutely different predictions right so now John needs to figure out which of those lines to actually trust right he obviously has a data of all the houses from in the New York locality that he has uh, and his broker has these three different real estate brokers have given him three different estimates now John is faced with the problem which is which is the best line to kind of choose among these three possible lines so there are two options that you can have here so one is obviously you can basically see that how many points are basically so he, what real estate broker has given him basically the two different parameters of beta naught and beta one and now what john has with him is basically this right he has a lot of lot of these points right lot of lot of points around here So what he can do is one is basically try and see how many of those points how many of those points actually lie on this straight line and based on that he can basically see that if if, they, if any of those lines number of points that lie on the straight line right? if the, there are three lines 
and one of the line has more number of points lying on them then you can probably choose that particular line right so that's one technique to kind of figure out which is out of the three possible straight line which is the one to go ahead with the other technique that he can kind of choose is he can basically measure that how far or near the actual data points are from the lines that he has been given right so that definitely this idea seems a lot more uh, robust basically based because again it's going to consider all the data points and see how many data points are actually uh, you know of all the data points that are there uh, how far are they from the actual predicted as per the real estate broker right so then what you can do is very simple you can basically check for the actual predicted ones as by the real estate broker and the actual what is the price for a given square foot area and then see how far they are right so you can just do y pred minus y actual function right so what you have what basically this guy what we can do is basically for every data point that is there so there are multiple different data points right for each data point you can basically this is a predicted line so this is a predicted right so given y given x this is a predicted line and this is actually the uh, real life data right and then you can basically measure the difference right and difference square so you can just measure y pred minus y actual and you can basically take the square of that right so that would basically give you an idea of how far is your prediction off from your real life data now you do this for all the data points in the data set right and then you sum them up so you just sum all the differences right so for all points you would basically do the same thing right similarly for a point here also you would basically get the difference so for each point you would basically check the corresponding real life this is the real life data and this is the predicted data and you basically check what is the difference between real life and predicted and you sum that up anything so now what you want is basically a line that gives you the least number of deviations right so least deviation basically means that your yp minus ya square this summation should be as low as possible right so the best line would be the one which has got the minimum deviations right so that's it so that's the concept of uh, cost function uh, the further your points are from your predicted points the bad the worse the line is right so this is something that is called cost function and it's popularly known as this is the cost function this is called a least squared cost function and the idea that we what you want to do is basically we want to kind of select the line out of the three lines that have been given by the brokers we want to select the line which minimize this cost function right so that's a concept log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates